Welcome to Creature Geek, the special effects makeup podcast from the fan and pro perspective. I am Len Peralta. And I'm Frank Ippolito. And we are back after a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of running around. You were in Dragon Con in Atlanta. Yeah, we missed you. And I know, I wish I could have been there, but it sounded like a great, uh, great time. Uh, today's guest sort of fits into that world. We had uh, Frank Conniff and Trace Beaulieu on the last show. Uh, but today's guest is a senior director of video production and digital media for Shout Factory. And if you don't know who Shout, F- Shout Factory is, and you should, uh, they cur- curate and release super cool collections of TV shows like Mystery Science Theater 3000, uh, Freaks and Geeks, as well as fully restored, high-quality collector's versions of movies like The Thing, Return of the Living Dead, and Mad Max. He is also the co-host of the Arkham Sessions podcast. Would you please welcome to Creature Geek, Brian Ward. Wow. Hi, Brian. Now I'm just going to come here every week. <laughs> just so we can keep hearing, make it keep sound hearing fancy. that over and over again. <laughs> It's one thing I pride myself on are the introductions of our guests. Nice job. Feel, Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So, and so and Shout I've Factory. got to tell you, I'm a big fan of this podcast. So when Frank texted me, I I was in instantly. So uh, instantly had to ask permission from Andrea. Yeah. Kind of, <laughs> you're like, can I come home late? <laughs> And Andrea we is the, uh, you, the co-host we, of his his podcast with him. Yeah, we want to talk to you about Shot Factory, but we mm-hmm. want. I also want to know a little bit more about Arkham Sessions. What, let's talk a little bit about that. What yeah. is what is the what is the show Arkham Sessions about? I'm assuming it's something to do with Batman. Yeah, a little bit of Batman. Uh, the um, the show started because Andrea Letamendi, who is a clinical psychologist, um, she did this documentary called Necessary Evil: The Supervillains of DC. And uh, it was literally about every villain that you could possibly talk anything about. And she was one of many. They had all the different writers and the artists. And uh, they brought in a psychologist to talk about the psychology of these villains. And it occurred to me that a lot of the stuff she was talking about were specifically origin stories from Batman the Animated Series. And so I said, well, that's really interesting. Um, And she told me that, that Batman the Animated Series was literally her uh, gateway into geekdom but also psychology uh she was Mm. very interested in the psychology of these characters so i said well then we just need to have a podcast where every episode we go through one episode at a time where you look at it from the perspective of a clinical psychologist uh maybe even working in arkham how you would treat those characters including batman um because batman's not okay (laughs) clearly in in my book (laughs) She's an apologist, so she's willing to give him more leeway than I am, but I think he's as bad as anyone in the rogues. So you're going through all the um, all the Batman animated series, mm-hmm. episode by episode. Yeah, yeah you we've just, done... You, uh, just did, um, you just did uh, Killing Joke, yeah. and then you just did Suicide Squad also. Yeah, yeah. Occasionally, we'll, uh, we've done all 85 episodes of Batman the Animated okay, Series yeah. slash uh, Batman, The Adventures of Batman and Robin. Uh, so we took a little bit of break from the animated stuff to do, um, well, to do another animated. We did the killing joke. We had to do that. Uh, mm-hmm. And then we just did Suicide Squad, for better or for worse. Yeah, that, I just listened <laughs> to Suicide Squad on the uh, my drive to and from Anaheim the past couple of days. Yeah, sorry about that. No, man. <laughs> they were there. <laughs> you know, the only th- I, I wanted more like like clinical breakdown. Yeah. Like yeah. it was it was like almost a review and yeah. almost clinical but yeah. I want I wanted I wanted all the technical stuff. Well the the funny thing is we realized about midway through the movie in fact we we went and saw it together and we looked over at one another around the same time as if to go this is literally our Batman assault on Arkham episode mm. which is entirely suicide squad based it's like all of the characters are the exact same and so mm. we're just like oh god we're just going to be repeating assault on Arkham this is really <laughs> horrible. <laughs> But uh, you know, the movie was what it was. Yeah, uh, that's that's uh, that's a great review. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that should you know. be on the that should be on the poster. Uh, it is what it, it is. is. What it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I, you know what? I disagree with you about some things. I really loved the uh, the portrayal of Joker. Mm. And I loved like the best part of that movie was the Joker and Harley parts. Like that whole backstory. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, this works so much. Like I wanted to hate Jared Leto as the Joker. Yeah. I was like ready to be like, this is horseshit. Yeah. 
it worked so fucking good. Andrea disliked Leto more than I did. I thought Leto was fine. I thought I thought he was just another portrayal of the Joker. Yeah, I liked it. I yeah. mean, you know, it was really no different for me than a lot of other characters. He wasn't inspiring in any way. I, I don't no, think they're going to be talking about Oscar, you know, contention. But yeah, but as a modern day gangster, yeah, like that's fine. that's nuts. Mm -hmm. And like when I first saw, it, I was like, why the fuck does he have a grill? And then it was like. Batman has knocked his teeth out so many times. <laughs> oh, that's, see, that's why he has a grill. See, then and that and it you're, started you're to just pieces like, together. Me. Yeah, like I was like, this is great. Yeah, you sound like me in like Man of Steel or Batman versus Superman, where I'm just putting in a whole bunch of stuff that never, was never, it was, never, <laughs> it was just uh, implied. Yeah, maybe. yeah, I'm, just, I'm, yeah I, I'm an apologist for those movies. Oh, it's okay. But uh, but I thought I thought Leto was fine, and I thought uh, I, I thought Margot Robbie absolutely stole the movie. I mean, she uh, was fantastic. Yeah. Um, moment. She had moments that yeah. were that were good. I, there was there was a lot of moments in that movie that I thought were good, but yeah, overall it was like meh. Yeah, well, by the end, and I think I mentioned this in the podcast, uh, by the end of that movie, I felt like we were back in the mid-90s where mm -hmm. it was like, oh, God, we need to end this. Uh, Quick, let's throw an explosion <laughs> at the magical spell that's going yeah, on. Yeah, there's going to be a monster. Why she's... is there a bomb? A bomb diffuses the magical spell? What? And why? They, remember the... oh, and God. then she's dancing in front of the... Like, so, like, so, uh, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, anyways. This yeah. is all a ringing endorsement. I have not seen Suicide Squad. Oh, but now wait till I'm you like... see Killer Croc. Not dive into the water, but do the scurry Just move sort of, that's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. It's kind oh, of, God. it's almost lizard-like instead but of Croc-like. Although it, I guess it, it is sort of Croc. Kind of, but it... He could have just dove in and it would have yeah. been like, all right, cool. He's in the water. But when yeah. he did the scurry, it was just like comical. And yeah. Not good comical. <laughs> yeah. I kind of wish that they would have gone with the Killer Croc look that they went with it, like Jim Lee's Killer Croc. That would have been super cool. You know, I didn't even I mean, hate the look of this Killer Croc. I thought that the, the actor just sucked and was flat. And like it just, it, there was nothing there. It was there. nothing to him. Nothing yeah. whatsoever. No, it was just such a throwaway. No, the 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 thing that that I thought was weird about Suicide Squad in general is, is I really thought it should have been the 21st century version of the Dirty Dozen. I thought it should have been mm -hmm. that unit of people that you pull together to do the job that the government can't do legally. Mm -hmm. And instead they were like, Turns out there have been meta humans here all along. That guy in prison, we've known about him for a while. And you uh. know, it's like, no, soup. Wait, what? And that's the <laughs> problem. That's the problem of a shared universe. You don't yeah. put Superman in a universe with anybody because he should always be the orphan that is alone. Yeah. And and you can't like throw him in with a bunch of metahumans and have him feel like the orphan anymore. Then he just becomes like everybody else. Yeah. Once you get Man Martian Manhunter, I mean, uh, Superman's oh, nothing. Right. Who cares? Right. <laughs> really, when it comes to Superman, who cares? Yeah, who cares? I, I can't empathize with that guy anyway. He's what? He's stronger. He's invincible. He can fly. He could do like everything. Mm -hmm. He could put on a pair of glasses and become invisible. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't relate to anything about Superman. Nope. Nothing. Nope. And if you put him in a in a universe with Batman, Superman becomes an asshole. Yeah. Because due to some <laughs> unearned loyalty to, to a guy in a cape who has no superpowers, he will not go in and instantly clean up Gotham City when you know Superman is the one character that could do it. Mm -hmm. But he's like, no, no, no. You want this city. You can have it, Batman. I'm going to be a a reporter is my day job and I'm just going to hang out and, you know, you let me know if you need any help. You don't need, you don't need, okay, well, it'll be fine then. <laughs> Meanwhile, people are like dying in this city because this one guy can't clean it up. A loser. It, yeah, because ba Batman then becomes powerless right. when Superman's around. Yeah, Batman should like... be all by himself because he should be the one guy who is holding this city together yeah. with tensile. But the problem is now that you've given him a bat family with like 20 members of it and Gotham City is just getting worse. You're like, man, you guys are really bad at this job. <laughs> yeah, but what superhero is good at this job? Right. Other right. than Iron Man, who actually stopped all of the bad stuff for a little while until yeah. all of a sudden there was a rip in, in the sky and the, the aliens started coming out. Yeah. Iron Man's the only one that's really cleaned up the world. That's right. That's right. And that's that's the unfortunate thing is in order to be successful in the real world, like us reading the comic books, mm -hmm. you have to be bad at your job because 
you're going to throw them in prison, but they're just going to get out. And then you got to throw them in prison again, but they're just going to get out. <laughs> and then you're like, man, I've been at this for 75 years and they're still <laughs> getting out. And with Batman, this is sort of my love hate relationship with Batman. And we've, I've talked about this on the podcast a lot. And that's, that's that, um, because of his success in the real world, he is the least efficient um, and maybe the least successful uh, hero of the comics or the animated series or whatever. Now, I, I preface this by saying I love Batman, yeah. but um, his whole shtick is like, I'm going to instill fear in the hearts of the criminal cowardly lot. Okay, well, you've got supervillains that are breaking out of prison and laughing at you. Um, so they're not scared. All right, well, let's just put them aside because they're crazy. Then you've got their thugs. They're not scared. Or they're more scared of the villains than they are of you. Okay, so let's put that aside. There are common muggings in Gotham City. If anyone should be scared <laughs> in Gotham City, it should be the common muggers, and they're not. Batman is horrible at this. Yeah, maybe his whole bat thing he needs to rethink. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's not really instilling the fear. I say the problem is the car. That's my whole thing is if you give him a car, he has a human thing. Mm. He is now a man yeah. and you saw him go down main street. Okay. And you could give him the bat wing cause that can be stealthy Yeah, and he can sort of be anywhere. But I like the idea. I kind of like the, 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 uh, version in, in Batman versus Superman where he's sort of that thing that lurks in a corner. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and people yeah. years later there, you still have that one cop that's like, I saw him. I saw him. You yeah. know, like that's how he should be. He should be the boogeyman. But instead, the more gadgets, you never throw a spotlight into the sky to tell people, A, I can beckon him. And B, this is where he's going to be in about five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it doesn't work. Yeah. 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 You think that uh, Batman would, uh, you know, the get like, there would be that sort of, like you said, the boogeyman perspective of him where the stories kind of outweigh the reality. Yeah, but, uh, that 89 Batman with the uh, I'm not going to kill you. I want you to tell all your friends about me. That is where that's what Batman should be. Yeah. But instead. But now 20 years later, he's pissed off and just killing whoever he wants, right. killing him and branding him. Right. Well, at this point. I mean, it's taken 20 years. At this point, you're like, okay, I just have to start killing Yeah, people. he's sick of it. I can't. I can't deal with it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the Arkham Sessions is sort of your uh, passion project mm -hmm. with Andrea. And uh, your real job, and one of the reasons, or the reason we asked you on the show uh, was... Well, the reason we asked him on the show is because he's a beautiful man. Well, well that too. I, mean, I, I can see that from the podcast. videos. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> video's going factory, up. <laughs> Oh, this whole thing's over. Uh, I've been a huge fan of Shout Factory for a real long time. Thank you. And uh, I actually, I had reason to talk to Shout Factory not that long ago. Um, you probably know Michael Rebus. I do know Michael Rebus very yeah, well. I, He's I one of the few people who's been at the company as long and actually longer than I have. I've been there 12 years. Yeah, so there's a lot of exciting things happening with Shout Factory. Uh, obviously this week, uh, you guys released the collector's edition of the thing, which is super, super cool. It's true. Uh, but you also have, uh, the new reboot of MST 3k. That's right. That's cool. Yeah. Which we're uh, really excited about. Uh, and when the last, last show, you guys were talking to MST folks. So yeah. It was, yep. It's, yeah, but uh, they're not involved in the, in the new one. At they're all. not, no. they're not. Well, I, I'm I mean, not even, um, not as much as I want to be. Well, really when you're at that company, you just want to like. You guys having an MST meeting? Can I, can I come in on that? Can I just, come hear some things. I just, uh, well, like you know, it's uh, MST is 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 really kind of the cornerstone of, of Shout. I mean, Shout was doing a lot of different things, but MST sort of helped elevate that the uh, the brand. Yeah, I would say absolutely. I mean, the, we we really made our mark um, about twelve years ago. We we really uh, kicked in with uh, um, Freaks and Geeks. On DVD, mm -hmm. we did uh, the yearbook special edition. And from that point on, it, it became a thing of like, okay, well, now we're sort of finding our, our niche. We're, we're finding the people um, who love collections. We were started by the same guys who started Rhino Records. Uh, yep. So it's the same yep. mentality. Everything you grew up on never quite outgrew. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and after which I was also a big fan of Rhino as well. So as was I. I mean, I dating back to being a little kid. I mean, I, I think um, I think I was probably in the fourth grade and listening to the Monkees on the Rhino, you know, cassette tapes <laughs> and you know stuff like that. And so uh, it's the same mentality. They got rid of Rhino, sold that off, but decided they didn't want to be um, retired. They just wanted to keep doing stuff making collections of stuff yeah so we started mm-hmm. taking that business and um and it's it's built a little more and more every year mst definitely uh helped put us on the map with a certain group of people and i was producing those dvd sets up until mst versus gamma i think that was the mm-hmm. last set that i produced and uh, i think at the time it was because i was doing 20 years of power rangers or something like that like (laughs) yeah so yeah we did 20 full seasons of power rangers and one giant red ranger helmet and it was like oh those are so cool i never got into power rangers i didn't as a kid um but then i had to watch all 20 seasons in two years and Mm. um so you, you become a library of information uh sort of it it does all sort of blend together i i become a library of seasons mm. whole seasons as opposed to what's your favorite episode oh i can say <laughs> my favorite season but that's about it yeah what's your favorite season of freaks and geeks <laughs> oh jeez, the one the the only one you know what would have been yeah. season two yeah um, no season but you know freaks and geeks to me i keep i go back and i watch that box set uh frequently yeah. Um, and uh, and you know what? I don't think it could have gone a, done gone a, to a second season. I really don't. It it's a perfect I time think, capsule. I mean, you you yes. you wouldn't want to see it go much longer than that. People talk about it. People talk about their favorite shows. I don't know that I would ever want to see another season of Firefly. You know, everybody. I mean, there's still people trying to get. Oh, petitions. I'd be into Firefly. I might be, but. I mean, they did the movie, which I thought was pretty fun, too. But I kind of loved the end of the movie being the end of the, the mm. series. Like, it, it did a nice job of wrapping yeah. it up. Yeah, but Yeah, I, yeah I, I get what you're saying. It's sort of kind of, we're seeing that a little bit. Well, I don't know. Maybe we will be seeing it in a couple a years. fourth season Wars. of classic Star Trek. There you go. We need a fourth season. <laughs> well, but only if you can get everyone back. Yep, yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> they have to all sign on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be very difficult at this point, but don't you feel like we would we're getting a little bit of that with Star Wars as far as like too much of a good thing is like not yet. Shut your mouth, Len. <laughs> we'll, we'll find out in December. Yeah, bite, yeah, bite right. With tongue. Rogue One, I think Rogue One's eh, gonna be I, great. I know. I, I I'm trying not to be the downer here, but I yeah, feel you like are. well, you know, I love Star Wars. Don't get me wrong. I just I you know I feel like there was something special about it only a few times and then mm-hmm. and then it became more special when I worked on it. That's it right. It did. That's right. It did. It actually did. It reinvigorated it. Was, it, it, became, for it became all a of new, my friends. A new thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, and really, it was your work on it that should have ended it. Like you know, just like <laughs> just like comes Serenity, on, go to credits. Yeah, yeah. You were like, you know what? <laughs> this is where it could end. I'd be happy. Everybody just the had end a good of that time. movie. Yeah, the the little the little bump at the end should have been a, like a like a holographic image of Frank standing there next to Yoda and Anakin and Ben. When would they put you in? They could totally do that. They're notorious for putting people in backgrounds and stuff like that. Everyone they can get into a costume. Yeah, why not? Um, that would be it, man. That would be great. So the thing I want to talk to you about, Brian, is. Uh, I love uh, behind the scenes featurettes. Yeah, all of the documentaries yes. and EPKs and stuff that have that have happened in movies. And growing up in the makeup effects, like getting like really into it, that was where I like learned the names of all the the big guys. Like, I mean, the the I guess the first big behind the scenes thing was making a thriller that mm. I remember seeing. Yeah, mm. and that introduced me to Rick Baker and Greg Canham and Tony mm-hmm. Gardner and Tom Hester and like all these really great makeup effects guys and. The making of Thriller introduced me to uh, American Werewolf in London. Yeah, because I hadn't seen it before. That. Yeah, I was, was too young. That, yeah, yeah, I was too young. Yeah. And and uh, I was fascinated because we rented the making of Thriller from our from our local video store. Mm. And then uh, when Landis is talking about 
He didn't really know who Michael Jackson was. Michael <laughs> Jackson had seen American Werewolf in London. And then they show a clip. Yeah, with the were werewolf biting the guy's head. Yeah. I need to see I'm this. Like, <laughs> what is this movie? I've got to see it. I want to see the heads rolling across the street. Yeah, but you're, you're right. There, there, was, there was that one. And then I always think back to uh, networks where you would have like a big summer blockbuster movie mm -hmm. and um, HBO did a couple of them. But I remember the ones on like Fox where it'd be like, uh, like Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves hosted by Pierce Brosnan, mm -hmm. where it'd be like on yes. Monday night advertising the movie that's coming out Friday. Uh -huh. And you're like, Th those would just be one hour of making of and cameras going places. And you're just like, Jesus, I don't, I didn't realize that all this stuff happens. Yeah. And then they would show you some teaser clips from yeah. the, and you're like, oh, it's what the internet <laughs> is now. Yeah. But, and and do you remember um, Lights, Camera, Action with Leonard yes, Nimoy? Yes. Oh, yes. That, that was another one that like I was always glued to. It was on like Nickelodeon, I think. Mm -hmm. And that, I remember seeing like the making of Star Wars. You yeah. Know, like, mm -hmm. or, that was awesome. The one episode that, that I would always tune in to see uh, of Reading Rainbow. Mm -hmm. would always be the behind the scenes making of Star Trek The Next Generation where they would oh, take you on the set and they would show you how the beaming effect is done with uh, the glitter and the spinning in the water, you know, like, and they would show you that. And I'd be like, if it wasn't that episode, I'd be like, look, I, I'd rather just read a book than watch this show. <laughs> but if it's the Star Trek episode, I'm in. I want to see that. Yeah, so, like, you know, there's these great origins of these yeah. EPK things. And the EPK is electronic press kit. Um, okay. So... That's like when you're on set and you you get the call sheet. There, there's always like a little line like EPK, and those are it's like a like one or two dudes running around with a camera trying to grab capture. The, the, yeah, like I, I guess the still photographer is sometimes considered EPK, um, but sometimes there's a whole separate team just mm -hmm. doing. Like when we were on Pirates, there was all there was a whole team of dudes that were just the EPK guys, and you know those are that's cool. Sometimes independent production companies that are just they're just known for you know that kind of guerrilla journalism yeah that that they can be out of the way on set but get all the really cool stuff that tells that story mm -hmm. um but anyways so like that's that's what kind of like introduced a lot of us and a lot of my generation to makeup effects and special effects and everything like that um and i think that like the best like uh behind the scenes featurette box set thing is the alien quadrilogy yeah that is that like if you had a hold up any other behind the scenes, you know, special edition, blah, blah, blah. I think that that is probably like where the bar is. That's, uh, I, I put that one um, right in line with the Lord of the Rings box sets, mm -hmm. particularly the extended editions mm -hmm. where we I haven't watched, watched those. any of those. Holy moly. It's, yeah, it's, they're amazing. you can't, you just can't sit and watch it in one sitting. I mean, it's yeah. there's too much stuff. Oh no! And it's amazing. And and I would put those two as like the thing that I would take with me with a Blu-ray player onto an island <laughs> where I had <laughs> the Lord of the power. Rings and the Alien Quadrilogy. Yeah, where I yeah where I where I, where <laughs> I would uh, yeah. But but um, the the guy who made. Uh, the Alien uh, Anthology box set uh, bonus features. Uh, Charles De La Zarica is a friend of mine, and um, he I, and I tell them this probably every time I see him. Uh, he is the gold standard of bonus feature producers for me, and that's what, really what I look for. You know, I, I, that's the kind of thing I want to do. That like, you, you strive to do yeah, with the Shout Factory I, stuff. Yeah, like when I just recently did um, Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. And that turned into about a two hour and eight minute documentary. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. the, the whole awesome. time I'm like, what would Charlie think of this? And so, <laughs> so you're essentially just making like a straight up documentary about these films. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, more often than not, because with shout factory, we do some contemporary stuff uh, for sure. But our bread and butter really is in collector's editions of old movies mm -hmm. and, and things that uh, you always grew up wanting uh, collector's editions for. And mm -hmm. so we treat everyone or we try to, um, like it's someone's favorite movie, even if it's not ours. Mm -hmm. So we go looking for those super fans and we're like, what do you want on this box set? And then we try to make it. And I think the beauty of, um, what I do versus an EPK 
crew is you'll notice with those EPK <clears throat> with the EPK um, uh, interviews, it's always like, oh, this director, he's an amazing, an amazing director. He's a visionary. Yeah. He'll, you're going to love this movie. You're really, it's all sell, sell, yeah, sell, yeah, yeah. sell. But when you're doing a documentary on a movie that was made 30 years ago, you get the best stories. You get all the dirt. Yeah, the and, dirt. and then the, and then the studios tell you, "Hey, we can't air that dirt." And sometimes, you cut, you cut sometimes stuff. I've cut out plenty. <laughs> that Buckaroo Banzai uh, documentary was two and a half hours before it was two hours and eight minutes. Um, <laughs> but you know, th then you've got some studios that are like, "Eh, whatever." It's thirty years ago, you know. So it's like you you really. It's funny too what they make you cut out. Sometimes the 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 stories aren't what what does it, or you know, even if it's something disparaging. Like when you look at the Alien. Uh, anthology said like mm -hmm. that stuff those people are just talking crap about everybody and they're mm -hmm. like oh we hated ridley scott we didn't trust him and then we saw the footage we're like oh god he's actually doing a good job you know yeah. like there's that stuff and and uh that stuff is amazing to get because it really puts context behind this guy who became this visionary director but even then the crews didn't know him or trust him and you're yeah. just like oh my god well, i heard That's the same the, the crews said the same thing about uh james cameron when he yeah. was making aliens yeah like they had you know he had a like work really hard to convince the crews that yeah he wasn't just some jackass well part of that was like he came out of the corman camp mm -hmm. and then uh you know his big claim to fame at that point was terminator yeah um which was probably pretty campy but then uh i think what really killed him with that crew was it was a british crew mm -hmm. and he was not so, uh. so i think it was you're taking tea time when this is ridiculous what is that trolley coming what everyone's taking a break this is some bullshit like like and you just don't do that on a cameron on a camera yeah. so the uh did you you'd had nothing to do with the thing collector's edition correct no i watched it it was awesome loved it um i'm, yeah. I'm gonna watch it yeah yeah, no, that one was uh, handled by folks over at our sort of sub, I don't want to say sub because it makes it sound lesser, but Scream Factory, which is the same company, but it's our horror arm. Mm -hmm. um, a Perfect. lot of them, uh, you know, they don't let me touch too many of that stuff. I am working on Dreamscape right now for Scream Factory. So mm. that one, mm. that one I'm having fun with, uh, with Snake Man, stuff like that, ah, right up your alley. Cool. You, guys, uh, you guys distributed a couple of, projects that i had worked on in the past lost skeleton yeah. returns again yeah the larry blammeyer stuff yeah. yeah and i just saw today larry uh larry announced that he's putting together a lunchbox compilation of all of his films <gasps> that would be it's awesome yeah, i always wanted to do um was it the man with the screaming forehead tales of the screaming forehead yeah, 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 yeah i that, i yeah. did the, the prosthetics on that did you really i, I made the four yeah i have one of the foreheads in the office here somewhere yeah because he sent me a copy of the what would have been the, like the director's His cut, cut yeah. and and um i was really keen on it like, i wanted to do it we did that one we did a uh lost skeleton returns again and then we dark did and stormy night. dark and stormy night i think you know they're they're quirky movies and you have yeah. to like be a fan of like larry's style but I think they're like really fun and they're perfect send ups for what they are. Yeah. Like, uh, like Larry's Larry's dialogue in, uh, lost skeleton, uh, returns again is some of the greatest, just the smartest. Yeah. You're like, I don't even understand how he memorized it. It's yeah. Ridiculous. Some, yeah. Some of the little like monologues that they have. It's like what? And yeah. I mean, and it, I'm a little bit biased because some of these things I was on set for and like, I had to like, bite my hand to keep from let like cracking up like on some of these takes like nah. no i don't think you're biased at all in i wasn't on the set and i was doing basically the same thing in my office every day and and there's nothing that says that a project that i work on i have to love but yeah. but i couldn't wait to talk to larry and um learn more about the making of those movies and i couldn't wait to keep going i wanted to do more it was the like he was doing the kickstarter for a little while or yeah, trying to he, he tried to do another one. skeleton film um, and I, I had asked him, I was like, Hey dude, if you want me to do makeup or creatures and on that one again, let me know. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, I got this, this guy. So I was like, all right, yeah. whatever, dude. So you were working with the Kyoto brothers. Yeah. That was when I was working at the Kyoto brothers. Yeah. Nice. Um, but yeah, that was fun. I got to, I got to play the creatures in skeleton and lost skeleton returns again. Are you in any of the behind the scenes video that we developed? I know I shot a bunch of it. Yeah. Um, I've never actually watched any of the behind the scenes um i have the dvd i don't even think i've opened it yeah it's um, um 
Trish. Yeah, Trish did, Geiger. Yeah, yeah, she she made the the documentary that we ended up putting on there of all the footage that mm -hmm. that you guys had shot and everything. Yeah. And uh, you might be in there. Now I'm gonna have to go look. Yeah, no, yeah, and Trish <laughs> Trish and Frank Dietz ended up making the Bob Burns documentary. Yeah, Beast Wishes. Yeah, mm -hmm. which I, I helped on that, and then they have a, a King Kong documentary that that they're trying to wrap up, and uh, I helped on that. Wow. So, yeah, no, I uh, through meeting the the Larry Blamire folks like yeah you know it's pretty they're they're a fun gang they're i met bob really wacky i met bob for the first time meeting with larry like larry's like oh why don't you meet me at this house oh <laughs> you went to bob's house <laughs> yeah and i showed up at the house and i'm like wait a minute isn't this bob burns house you know because <laughs> so awesome i had seen i had gone to bob burns's house uh when they had done the thing um i guess it was his last oh yeah the last one and uh the thing from another planet well yeah yeah, yeah the, the classic yeah, yeah, the, yeah the 50s thing and all the stuff done in perspective yeah looking the out perspective the window stuff. and stuff oh. like all that stuff was amazing and so when i went back to the house i'm like this has got to be the same neighborhood and then it turned <laughs> out like i walked right into into the garage i was like holy crap larry's just there yeah hey. that's, you know. yeah that's an amazing <laughs> spot um so are you going to Monster Palooza this weekend? Monster Palooza actually starts today because this is coming out on Friday. So, I'm not. You're not. I want to you, you now. Should, you should. Um, you ever been to Monster Palooza? I've never been to Monster Palooza. I was just hmm. at Halloween Horror Fest in Long Beach. I don't know. Um, and that one was. This is Son of Monster Palooza, which is uh, Len and I recorded live from the Monster Palooza proper. Right, that's in the spring. Yes, um, Son of is a, it's a little bit smaller, uh, slightly different Where crowd. Is it? It's at the uh, the Hilton, Hilton or Hyatt or whatever Burbank 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 Hilton, yeah, or something like that, right across from the Burbank Airport. Yeah, um, it's a little bit smaller, a uh, bit of a different show than the springtime show, which is in the Pasadena Convention Center, but. Right. It's still fun. Is it both days? It's Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, yeah I'm because uh, on Saturday, uh, that's this weekend. Yes, that's the, for people listening. That's tomorrow. Okay, so so Saturday, I'm in Long Beach at the Long Beach Comic Con. Oh yeah, that's going because on the same uh, weekend. yeah, we've got Batman Day on Saturday. Mm -hmm. That's oh. the DC's big Batman Day, and so the Arkham sessions we're doing a um, uh, uh, podcast panel where we will be interviewing jimmy palmiotti about harley quinn who's that writing oh, nice. he's a dc writer he and his wife amanda connor write uh the harley quinn comics at this point and um you know a, a number of really great stories and and they it's almost like reading a mad magazine mm. um where she is she's just let go and there's nothing, there's no inhibition whatsoever. It's, it's really she can do whatever she wants. She's kind of become the Deadpool of DC. Where really, she'll hmm. she'll address the audience from time to time. Huh. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty. Did awesome. not know that. Yeah, so we're gonna go talk to him about that. But um, but now I think I know what I'm doing on a on Sunday. Yeah, I'll meet I'll meet <laughs> up with you on Sunday. We'll have a couple of drinks and heckle the monster people. What are you doing? Uh, what are you actually doing? I'm not actually day? doing anything. I'm just gonna go check it out. On Saturday, I'm probably gonna go uh, ride my dirt bike in the morning. All right. And then, uh, so for everybody that's listening on Friday, <laughs> that's right. That's right. You, you can go. Right. You can go on Sunday. And you can see me and Brian holding hands, skipping through the aisles. That's right. <laughs> well, well, well. Now, now I'll turn the the table a little bit. When you go to conventions, yeah. What do you? I mean, a do people know who you are? Yeah. Um, because you've got a podcast, but you're also a very successful creature maker and you know you did the show you did uh uh face off like do people come up to you do you get to walk the floor of conventions like this oh absolutely i, I mean any convention like i i never want to be one of those like dudes that's hiding out like behind right. you know but but let me say though uh as an observer at monster palooza frank is uh very well known on the show floor i imagine so yeah, yeah i mean it's He's, a small I mean, it's a small community like most everybody knows community. everybody there's a, uh, it's rare that there's somebody that i haven't heard of right and similar i mean like everybody kind of knows who everybody else is or has heard of them um and i've been around for 16 years in the industry so it's you know you're around 16 years in a community of a couple thousand people like right. it's not unheard of that everybody kind of knows you now and is monster palooza 
like a trade type show where you go like when you go to a convention from one year to a, to the next if i went to comic con from one year to the next there are going to be drastic changes like this movie no, Monst- is coming out how similar is it from one year what do you look forward to monster palooza is typically you're you're pretty much going to see the same people and the same things every yeah. year um artists push really hard to put new things out right. like like i'm going to go there this weekend looking for model kits for for Norm and I to paint on tested.com. I'm going to look for model kits and, and creature kits and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Like I want to go, I hope, you know, Miss Monster Mel is there because I want to go hunt down her stuff and get some of her like helmets and, and things. Um, you know, or uh, Andy Burkholtz, Monster Papa, like he's got great model kits. Um, uh, Dominic Quick, he's got great model kit. Like there's all these guys that make like nice little like, right. the, the garage kits. Right. Um, so that's usually what I'm on the hunt for when I go there. Um, but there's always like, you know, Mike Hill almost always has a brand new, like amazing piece of artwork, like, yeah. you know, life size, realistic. That's awesome. You know, stuff. Um, so, you know, I go there to be inspired. Uh, you know, I look at the, I'm like, fuck, that stuff's so good. I hope that, you know, I can still, you know, hold my own in this industry. <laughs> um, you know, like any, any convention, like even, you know, I just got back from Dragon Con. Like I go to a convention like that and yeah. I just, all I want to do is hang out on the floor right. and like drink and socialize with people. Right. And going to a place like Dragon Con, I come back from that so amped up and so fired up from seeing everybody's passion and everybody's like, like from the, the crappiest execution of the most thoughtful, you know, costume right. to like the most beautifully done masterful, like it's all mm-hmm. the same to me. Like, yeah. There was a guy that had a, a pretty fucking close spot on um, Watney EVA suit from oh. The Martian. Yeah. This guy named mm. Wayne. It was gorgeous. Like, I'd say that it's probably like 85, 90% like dead nuts. And like, that was gorgeous. He yeah. won one of the one of the prizes in the contest. And then there was some guy that had like some like kind of crappy cutout of Randy from South Park. And it was just, <laughs> and I, I was, I lose my shit over both of them equally. Right. You know, like. Right. So it's so you're not jaded yet. You're still a fan. I mean, I, I listen to the podcast, so you're no. The second that I'm jaded, I need to get out of this industry. Yeah. And anybody that is in this <laughs> industry that walks around with this like chip, like they're jaded, they're either like trying to make it sound like they like oh, I'm grizzled and I've been around and blah blah blah. Right. This doesn't impress me. Like who gives a shit? Like right. if this does, if you don't wake up every morning and like you're in love with this stuff, you're yeah. in the wrong industry because. This is not an easy industry. Well, the thing that I notice, and this is um, stepping back a little bit into the, you know, what I do, uh, you know, at Shout, where I'm creating these docs. And sometimes we go looking for some of these people who worked on the Snake Man or worked on, you know, various creatures for the thing or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and one of the things that, that I notice is from one generation to the next, like when I listen to your podcast, more often than not, the people who have been in the industry for decades they tend to be a little mellow they tend to be a little quiet like maybe maybe they don't want to be noticed as much or, or they're not they're not in it for that but then some of the people that i see online it's all about like the new generation is all about recognize me Look and my me. work recognize what i did yeah. Look at what i've you know so when you go to these shows and you're seeing both like i love listening to i think there always needs to be a balance between yeah. hyping yourself and your work up yeah. And and having a a proper social media presence, yeah, and then being, uh, or being that jackass that constantly posts these like look at me, right? Self like when I see somebody's Instagram profile for somebody professional, and eighty percent of the pictures are selfies, you're a jackass. Yeah, if if you <laughs> go on there and you're you're putting like work and you're sharing information and you're, you know, building up your fellow artists, those are the people that that are that are doing a good job. Yeah. You know, yeah, people who know the difference between a little bit of self promotion and like, wh- I, I prefer the people whose work is what's getting sold, not the person who did the work. You know, where it's like, yeah, I, I think that the work can sell that person. Oh, absolutely. As opposed to, yeah. you know, and and uh, yeah, we love to hate Glenn Hetrick on this podcast, and he's an, he's one of those people <laughs> that's just like a fucking. I, I call him the tattooed marshmallow. He's he's a dude that looks ridiculous, <laughs> and he thinks that that you know I don't know if he thinks this or not, but like that that persona that he ex- exudes and you know sweats out like it makes that's a turnoff well, you know that's a turnoff to producers like i know producers that are just like i saw that guy in face off and bust out laughing well what's funny is um and i i can say this i've never met him um i saw him at disneyland once yeah that was a trip 
Is that a, just a sweaty? There's there's this website I've I've seen that's called Sweaty Goths. It's like sweatygoth.com, <laughs> and they rate people on their gothiness and their sweatiness. Right. So you know, like like a couple of <laughs> you know goth kids, like all in black, like head to toe on the beach, is like yeah. a sweaty level ten, goth level ten. Yeah, you know. Um, so what? On the, on it the was sweaty night, goth factor. It was what nighttime, was and it was yeah. at one of the bars at downtown Disney. So, uh, you know. The sweaty level was low? Yeah, it was pretty low. Um, <laughs> but it was kind of weird, because I was just like, I'm in downtown Disney, and like, there's Glenn. Like, I don't, oh, wow. But then I also interviewed... So uh, it, was, it was a far away sighting, is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I was I was you, as close as we are as I walked by him. But did, did you did he smell real bad? Not that I remembered, <laughs> but it was Disneyland, so everybody. you know everybody. You know people have been there a while. But uh, a certain musk about Disney. And then maybe it turned mm. out that it it might not have actually. Maybe I just thought it was everyone else at Disney, and it, <laughs> it was, I don't know. <laughs> but then I interviewed V Neal um, yeah. uh, for the Pee Wee's Playhouse yeah. box set, and she couldn't be more pleasant. Um, yeah. when I met yeah. her, like she was, we have to get great. V on the show. Yeah. You know, I've, I've talked to her a couple of times. She's kind of in her own, uh, I've, Hey, I got a podcast. Oh, that's nice, honey. Uh, no, I want you to come on the podcast. <laughs> v. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you know, it, yeah, it, uh, oh, yeah. Tell him Brian was on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that'll, uh, <laughs> who? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> anyway, you know, one day when V feels like coming on, she'll come on it. Whatever. There you go. No, there's a lot of people that said they they jump on. And we just got to schedule. That's the hardest thing about this. That's why we had such a, you know, messed up last month is that scheduling got all screwy. Yeah. Um, but you had good shows. It turned into good shows. Yeah, we did have good shows. All right, you know, whatever. <laughs> That's what I like about you, your humility. I, no, I I always think every single I've said this before. Every time I do an episode, as soon as we're done, I'm like, oh. I suck so much. Yeah, I ruin this podcast. <laughs> That's what I think about my That's, podcast. Yeah. Like, Thank God I'm doing the heavy lifting instead of Drea. Oh, <laughs> dear. oh that sucks so much. Oh wait, no, no, <laughs> scratch that, reverse it. <laughs> so, yeah. So does uh, the shout have a uh, have a presence at like these shows? Do they ever show up? And I, I would think Scream that they Factory would, they would should have, have pretty... something at, at Monster Palooza. One would think, especially if it's in town. Um, they should go yeah. to the, the, the Pasadena one in the spring. We've yeah. done, we've done Comic-Con every year uh, for the last 10 years or so. Uh, that's our big show every year. Uh, we did New mm -hmm. York Comic-Con once and it didn't work out for us. Like it's the, the overhead to send people to New York yeah, and nuts. put up a booth. It's just ridiculous. I mean, just the hotel costs alone. Uh, but then uh, we've done Kamikaze a couple of years. I, I would think if we would do Kamikaze, we would do... You, I think Monster that you would Palooza. have a better better market at Monster Palooza than at yeah. Kamikaze. Like, I Kamikaze so is such a big kind of a cluster you know well yeah. you know the thing about shout factory you have scream factory but right. you also there's a lot of there's a lot of crossover like like for example the mystery science theater you have the powder like, factory there's... too for all the romantic comedies we should we're going to now <laughs> that's a new thing i'm gonna write that down um yeah well and we did just uh launch our new line our our new line uh shout select <laughs> Which it's basically all the things that it's aren't like the going McDonald's into, special menu. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the <laughs> pick two. It, yeah, it's it's everything that we <laughs> look at and go. This deserves to be like a huge collector edition. Like mm -hmm. uh, Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai was our very first. They're all numbered. Yeah. Um, that was our first one, uh, and uh, Bill and Ted. I just did. Mm, um, yeah. Both of yeah. those movies plus a third disc of bonus features. Uh, we actually got Keanu back to talk about Keanu. it. Keanu. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Keanu. Did he ride one of his fancy custom motorcycles in? He did. Oh, those are cool. I didn't, I didn't, I mean, we were, we were there on the set because uh, we got him and Alex together uh -huh. and that's uh, cool. Alex was there uh, hanging out and then all of a sudden Keanu walks in with his black, you know, uh, sort of suit jacket mm -hmm. and his helmet, you know, and, <laughs> and his motorcycle gloves. You're just you guys like, going to get a gonna get alex to do a, a commentary on freaks or freaked oh that'd be sweet yeah we had we had uh jim usterman on who worked on that he uh mm -hmm. jim did make up with bill corso on that wow um yeah you gotta do freaked that would be a good one to to hear some behind the scenes 
that's the other good thing about this particular job is if we do it long enough, we build these really great relationships with people. And then, you know, then it becomes a question of, you know, I just email them and go, Hey, remember us, that mm -hmm. good time you had doing this interview about that other movie you did. You want to do an interview about this one and you don't have to worry about agents and managers. That's, that's the bane of the job right there. Agents and managers always ruin boys. everything. Yeah. What was that? Lost boys. Lost boys. That'd be sweet. I would, Lost I would Boys do it. would be awesome. Yeah, I yeah. would totally do it. There, there are some really big titles coming up um, in 2017 that I'm the original, the original to. Fright Night. You should do that. Yeah, uh, I got that confused with Nightbreed <laughs> for a second. You know, it was like we did Nightbreed. Um, no, Fright Fright <laughs> Night is um, Roddy McDowell. Oh, I remember Fright Night. Now that I now that I I remember because then I thought about the remake. So did what? You like the remake? What are you? Uh, you said. Yeah. Uh, Lord of the Rings, and yeah. you said the Alien, yeah. One, what, what other like behind Big the ones? scenes featurettes or documentaries are like really stand out to you? Like things that like are must sees. Uh, you know, I'll plug I'll plug Charlie again. Uh, just about any of the Ridley Scott, you know, so Blade Runner. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. that collection has some great documentaries on it. Uh, just about anything he does with Ridley is going to be fantastic. There's another producer by the name of cliff stevenson who does a, a number of of really great ones uh he, he did some good ones for stallone one of the the documentaries for uh rambo the the one that the final rambo movie that came out the most recent rambo yeah he did a great documentary on the first one and then when they released john rambo i guess the the second director's mm -hmm. cut version or mm -hmm. whatever um he did a second documentary that was basically all footage that you're just watching sort of the making of you know, oh, really? day 22 cool. day, you know, whatever, like mm. all of that stuff was really, really great. Uh, and he just recently, if you've seen like the, the box sets for, um, Hannibal the TV series, mm -hmm. like he did those. Mm. So Th that I love that show. I'm really getting into it. Yeah. I, I sort of, I n was a naysayer. It's like, it's like a really fucked up cooking show. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> that is true. Every time I watch that, I get kind of hungry. <laughs> well, you always see him like sautéing things or, you know, yeah, just sort of right? fibbing it. And you're like, mm, that looks really good. <laughs> and like, and then they've got. Then I just cry to myself because I'm yeah. eating pizza and drinking some Jack Daniels. Right. Oh, he's got nice <laughs> wine and fancy food. I just got pizza. Well, I mean, it's the right kind of pizza. The, the, uh, but then you've got like, the, the, what really makes you hungry isn't the preparation of it. It's Lawrence Fishburne eating it. So like I'm only in season one right now. <laughs> yeah. So like they've got those dinners every oh, week or yeah. whatever. And it'll just be like Lawrence Fishburne, you know, gently cutting. What is this? What is this I'm eating, Doctor? Is that is that it's very tasty. You're like, oh, I want some of that. Oh, can I have that? When I watch a cooking show, it's never actually watching the cooking that gets me hungry. It's watching the people eating it, at, you know, judging it. And I'm like uh, you look that looked delicious. <laughs> yeah. And but it's sad like because that. you know that that food on, on set is cold. Oh, yeah. And it's got oh. like some sort of silicone glaze on it, you know, or something <laughs> like that. The, the stuff, though, that I uh, the really sad part about my industry, and I'm glad Shout Factory is doing well with it, is um, the more and more we do where we're getting into the digital world. Mm -hmm the less and less studios feel the need to have an EPK team or the less and less studios feel the need to have like people dedicated on set to shoot behind the scenes yeah. or, and what makes my job easy is knowing that 20 years ago they had that mm -hmm. and there, mm -hmm. that footage might be around and I can use it or at least someone took a video camera. And that's the other thing is like, now we've got so many movies that are top secret that, you know, nobody's bringing home video cameras with them yeah. to set anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so it's, it's almost like it's becoming harder and harder to do really good documentaries and yeah. bonus features. Um, and, and the studios, I, I bless them for this because it means in 20 years, I can do the definitive documentary for it, mm -hmm. but it kills me to see an amazing movie uh, come out on Blu-ray and the studio didn't, do a special any edition effort. with any yeah. oh yeah like oh. it's it's just it's absurd hmm. i was a little bit disappointed with guardians of the galaxy i was watching was there, is there not uh, that good behind the scenes on that it was, no not the movie with special features oh. yeah 
Because well, I, I was like, but there should be more special features on this. Like, well, James and, Gunn, well, you know. And, and, and then there's a there's a thing with like those movies because those are big franchises where it's not even the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise, it's the Marvel franchise. So you would think that, you know, when the Phase 2 collection came out, there would be a, a disc that's just chock full of bonus stuff that you can't get anywhere else. And then more often than not, it's not do you, that great. Do you think that there's going to be some, like, enormous, like, enormous box set that comes out at the end of, like, Infinity Wars of everything from the first mm -hmm. Iron oh, Man yeah. to Infinity it's Wars? Oh, Gauntlet. It's totally just, you know, one big, one <laughs> enormous big gauntlet thing where you just stack gauntlet. the discs in there or something. Yeah, I, I think... And no, it would be, it would be, each would be inside of an Infinity Gem. Right. And you would open it up. <laughs> as a big oh. gauntlet. That, that, but, but there's a, you know, a prime example, this guy, Bill Hunt, um, over at the digitalbits.com, I go there every day to read about my own industry. And he, he knows the most incredible things about um, the various studio releases. And, and uh, Warner Brothers is doing their, that one. That's, yeah. You just gauntlet. spit some discs in For there. For people with, watching the video yeah, that I may that or may gauntlet. not put up. Um, right there. But uh, but Bill went on this amazing rant about uh, Warner Brothers and and doing the uh, Lord of the Rings or the the Middle Earth mm -hmm. collection and it's all six movies, um, but it's not even all the stuff that was in each edition and in, and they're charging an astronomical price, but just because you can put it in Bilbo's little hutch where you know it's like the Ugh. book and you're like <laughs> it's just the packaging that's different there's no new content but apparently Peter Jackson uh you know wanted to do a two hour documentary per movie yeah you know for for those and and uh, they were like no we're hmm. no we'll just we'll just build this little hutch and we'll sell it to fans who already own everything that's in this Ugh. collection you know what a bummer. Yeah. So when you know there are people who want to make those things and the money's not there, and I get it, sometimes the money's not there, but The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings yeah. and like yeah. the money's there. Yeah. They made they made a gajillion trillion bagillion dollars. But apparently hasn't broken even yet. Is that what they're is that what they're saying? <laughs> I don't know. Is that well, what the accountants yeah, are telling everybody? Well, yeah, there was a you know Peter was suing. You heard it here while. first, people. This is a nah, it's <laughs> a couple year old knowledge. Like I think I, you know there was a, a big lawsuit for a little while, but right before the Hobbit, where it's like Peter couldn't settle the deal because they were like, "Oh, the Rings hasn't made any money yet." Oh Jesus like, what? Christ! Yeah. No. Hey, speaking of uh, <laughs> of Hannibal, um, the guy, uh, what's his name? Who's, who's the showrunner on that? Um, oh, Brian Fuller. Brian Fuller. Brian Fuller is the showrunner on the new Star Trek show. Yeah. And you wanted you wanted to hear something that's really sad. Everybody, everybody, get ready to to hold your head and scream. Glenn fucking Hetrick is do is doing the makeup design on the new Ooh. Star Trek show. I predict that that's going to go just as south as everything else that he does, and it's that's probably the reason that it production just got pushed back. <laughs> because I it just did. Saw, they just, just announced. They yeah, just they announced today the yeah, production. They just pushed it. Yeah, Every, of everybody in the universe that could possibly do Star Trek TV show makeup, they get this retard <laughs> to do it. <laughs> I I was texting with this could. No, I was texting frankly, with. Every, you know, I was, this could be his redemption. No, it's really. not going to be. His, well, on. the only thing that's going to redeem it is that they've got Neville Page doing doing the pretty drawings. Yeah. Yeah, there you so go. as long as Glenn can find somebody to execute his drawings, <laughs> and not and Glenn can not get in his own way and screw it up, it'll be okay. Because you know Neville's a pretty drawer. Um, I was texting with Everett Burrell. We had Everett on a long time ago. Remember, he's the guy that named mm -hmm. Optic Nerve, and it started in his garage. And yeah, he he cried a little bit that day when I told him that. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, ding dong! That bought a shop. Now has oh, yeah. sucked his way up to uh, to building stuff for Star Trek, well, th and that's the weird thing. It's is sad. I'm I, so upset. Like, and, and give it to anybody well, except for this. And, and I would, I would always watch that show up until maybe the last season or two, where it just got bad. But, but they would always have these amazing credits and examples of things that all these other people worked had worked on and then it would be like and glenn hedrick of 
optic nerve. You're like, yeah. but I don't really know what he's done. I no, don't. He hasn't done. The only thing that he's done is the stuff that V. Neal has brought him on mm. since he's been a judge. Mm. And, and he met Brian Fuller on the episode I got kicked off on because Brian Fuller was a guest <laughs> judge on, on that, that episode. Oh yeah. yeah, so that I mean that's that's where that whole thing came from. Right. Wow. Like an, wow. Yeah. Hey Brian, if if you happen to if anybody happens to know Brian or be sitting next to Brian when when this all goes south because of Glenn, I, <laughs> I told you so. You ding dong. For those people that are fans of Glenn Hedger. Who is? We have to... who who? <laughs> somebody go on the internet. There might be Some, somebody no, no, listening no. to the show who with might everybody be... with all their internet foo out there. Go use your ninja skills and find me some pictures of work that Glenn has actually done. Like his work, not yeah. him posing okay, with that's something. A good, that's a good challenge. challenge. Put it in the comments. How do you at know? How do you know? You don't. Because everything is, like, you can go on the internet and you can find a portfolio of, like, just about everybody out. Even, like, yeah. these crappy people, all the, the idiots that have wanted to be on, and have been on Face Off. All the people that, like, have won or failed face off mm -hmm. you could find volumes of work that you're like oh yeah that's their work for good or bad try and find something that glenn has done not glenn's shop not you know whatever the hell they're calling it yeah. these days or him personally him personally. so that's our that's our challenge for this week's show and you want to know what <laughs> in the comments and and, and as Let's... a bonus i will show you a picture of his work from chronicles of riddick because it's horrible yeah yeah. So check the uh, comments at tested.com. Yeah, but we, I mean, we built some neat stuff for Chronicles of Riddick, and he somehow talked his way into working on that, and his his work was abysmal. Mm. And we we they they booted him. Wow. <laughs> we booted him off the island. This is the best show I've ever I can't stand let's, let's, ever let's, been on. Let's move on. Just do something. <laughs> Just do some I work. Wanna, it's a good thing cameras are rolling now because we we we'll do the box set for this show. For this show, yeah, <laughs> you, you you be our special features, and it'll just be a compilation of me, Badmouth, yeah. and Glenn from yeah. all of the episodes. <laughs> be great. No, but you know what? He can look like an idiot if he did good work. Yeah. You know, like, but that he spends more time on his appearance than his act than his craft makes me insane. I don't know, Brian. I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't studios, take it too. Studios would make me take this out of the documentary. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, hey, that. Uh, it's a good thing no one listens to this show. Yeah, like that time so. code from twenty five oh one to thirty eight oh two. God, remove that. Every everybody that's with <sighs> me that on that. Note, yeah. um, on that note, uh, <laughs> shout factory. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, now that Frank uh, has ruined yet about, another uh, episode of Creature Geek. <laughs> oh, this is the best. This is the best. Uh, this is why people like the show. I, I think, feel like right? I ruined it by not talking as much about like, you know. How much I, you hate something? No, I just like geeking out about things. <laughs> I, I just like geeking out about things. And you were specifically trying to ask me about my job. And I'm, I'm like, no, let's just talk about Batman. Let's talk about. I love Batman. Let's talk about Glenn. Let's talk about other things. <laughs> we could go in. At, you, hey, we're only at, uh, what, 50, 50 some minutes. You, you don't have a heart out for another 18 minutes. Hard. It's a mushy out. And Andrea will yell at me. I don't <laughs> she, want. I don't want her to yell at that me. That will happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you want to geek out about? You got a minute? No. I, I mean, I'm geeking out about being on the show. That's you're all. That's all I needed silly. right there. All right. Well, thanks. Yeah. I'm geeking out about the uh, the new thing, uh, Blu-ray, the collector's edition from Shout Factory, which is out right now. And you know what uh, just came really out? Yes. Or well, this past Tuesday. Um, is uh, we did a 30th anniversary of Transformers the movie. Ooh, that was one of your babies too. That was my it? baby. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, good documentary on that one, and uh, we did a brand new 4K transfer, Ooh, and um, nice. you know created the Blu-ray from that 4K scan, and it's uh, it's doing really well for us. It came out in a steel book, an official steel book. Fancy. Yeah. So we were awesome. we were very happy about that. So, uh, yeah, shoutfactory.com. Where can people find you online? Bro? I am on Twitter. Um, I am at bward028. That's, uh, that's the best place to find me. Um, otherwise, I'll be lurking in various DVD and Blu-ray forums. Um, you got the, inst you got the Instagrams? The fans. I don't. 
What about what about Ar- Arkham Sessions? Where, where can we find them on the internet? We are uh, on iTunes and all the places you can listen to Creature Geeks. And uh, you can find us on Twitter. We are at Arkham Sessions. You can email us if you want to learn more. That's Arkham Sessions at gmail.com. And you can go to Drea's website, underthemaskonline.com, to learn more about her stuff. Uh, it's all psychology-driven, all really cool. And, uh, yeah. If I need a shrink, could I call her? Do it. All right. Do it. I'm a little nutty. I need. I need some help. You know. You have to get dressed up as a uh, as a super villain uh, as a creature of the night, though. Oh. You have to. All right. And that's <laughs> that's just to hang out with her. I mean, you know, it's otherwise. That's the only reason I have to leave is I have to go get the costume so that I can just hang out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Fen Frank, uh, do we have any shout outs? Yes, that you want to. We have all of our lovely Patreon Patreon patriarchs. Um, my two favorite people in the whole entire universe right now, Jason Moore and Eric Seglum. Actually, when I was at Dragon Con, I hung out with Eric Seglum a bunch and, uh, nice. took him and his, uh, wife out to lunch and we geeked out about, uh, the Martian spacesuit. I showed him all the photos I had from that. So thank you, Eric. Those guys are our co-executive producers on our lovely tip jar called Patreon. And then we have our uh, Creature Geek avatar level ready for the ILM phone book. Here we go. Uh, Simon Hollick. Uh, oh, this is a new one. Do, 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 do Sergio? <laughs> D-I-O Diogo? D- oh, that's a new one. Uh, Brian Warner, my cousin. Uh, Kyle Spolstra? Gerard Libby. Sarah Thompson. Charles Babbage. Edward Haleco. Big Eddie. Uh, Ricardo Murillo, Nerd Forge. Um, nice. Oh, that's Eric Mullins. It, he put his name in the wrong spot. Uh, Raymond Stanek, Mark Ses- Sesman, and Donato Sinertko. 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 I've thought long Sinertko. and hard about Sinertko. donating enough to get on that list, but I, I always hear Brian Warner, and I'm like, oh, you, know, you don't want a Brian Warner and a Brian Ward. That'd be pretty awesome. Well, in, in the same yeah, list. No, we'll do it. All that's right, fine. All right. Yeah. There is room for all. Here, let me give it to you right now. I don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you want to be a part of uh, of this great Patreon that we have, it's it's uh, patreon.com forward slash creature geek. Yeah, for all you guys that are whining that, that the video isn't consistent or audio is wrong or whatever, chip in a little bit. Maybe we'll upgrade our stupid equipment. Yeah, we will. Or they'll just buy pizza. Yeah, or pizza. Or just buy pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Pizza and another. That's Brian, more... thank you. It's what I call upgrading my equipment. <laughs> um, I'm getting a little extra pepperoni. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show this week. Thank you for uh, having me. R- really appreciate it. Uh, check out uh, Brian online at his Twitter account and also at Shout Factory. His work at Shout Factories, which is really really awesome. Uh, thank you to for uh, to Tested.com for giving us a home. Uh, if you'd like to see more about Frank or myself, they were frankipolito.com or lenperalta.com on Twitter. If you have any comments, of course, go to tested.com. Remember, the challenge this week, try to find work by Glenn Hedrick. Put it in the comments. We'd love to see it. <laughs> Please. we like to see it. And, uh, you know, we'll just go from there. Uh, you can also write us, len at creature-geek.com or frank at creature-geek.com. Of course, Frank won't write you back, but that's okay. I will, or try to. <laughs> um, and uh, that's it. That's our show for this week. Stay tuned uh, for next week. We'll have another new show for you, hopefully. And that'll be an awesome one, too, uh, if it happens, because uh, I know who the guest might be. So there we go. Uh, right. We'll see you on the next episode of a Creature Geek. Take care, everybody. Love you guys. Bye. Thank you, guys. <laughs> that was All awesome. Right. Hey, man. I talked about anything you wanted to talk about. but No, uh, that was awesome. You know, hopefully you got an hour of something. Right on. Uh, yeah, if you want to send that, I can probably get it done in the morning. And then, uh, you know, I'll... I'm the other, exporting it right now, so... Yeah. The other... You're, you're B-Ward 028, right? Uh, 028, yes. 028. Okay. Here just we in go. case. There we go. I think we follow okay. you just, on... Just so you remember, Len, a lot of times people are whining that you're levels are higher than us okay i push you guys up as high as i can i'm just so. saying uh, that's the only thing that i've heard people whining about <laughs>
<sighs> okay. They're I, always going to whine about something, but I just... Yeah, whatever. yeah. I push I push you guys up as high as I possibly can. Um, Why don't you drop yourself down a little bit? Yeah, if I will <laughs> drop myself down. Always trying to elevate people to your level. <laughs> Why don't you try coming do, down I to do our level from time down and I push you guys up. I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. That's the thing. It's kind of inconsistent. I, you know what? Well. I think it's fine. I, I don't... But, you know... People, Especially for the uh, level of patron. You know. No, it, it was, That's right. It was it was Eric Seclum's wife that was just like, "Hey." Oh, she was complaining. Yeah, she, yeah. I, I hit her. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we will get anybody looking for Glenn Hedrick's work in the in the comments. Oh, that would be funny to see. <laughs> I love that we're doing it a couple days, so we don't have to wait for like months to until this to happen. So yeah, I mean, we'll, even even then, like he would have to physically be working on it and even then it could be a posed shot we don't know what he no, wore it on do you think anybody's see that other fun, that thing that you have yeah i'll, I'll post it I'll, uh, do you think anybody's ever said anything to him about us this show because this isn't the first time we've talked about him no I'm, you know who give, he probably doesn't give a shit or maybe he cries <laughs> himself to sleep every night i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's this is about as we've we've come we've this is about as 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 bad as it's gotten, but it's, what, uh, on yeah. I have this effect on some no, people. No, I, I needed, I needed to let it out. It was like a nice big treat. <laughs> I mean, we actually, you actually called him out and said he may I'll be leave, the reason. By the way, that... I'm leaving this all, I'm still recording video, so this is all I'm going to stay on. <laughs> this is the after show? I stopped the, recording after... my audio. No, 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 though, I don't need your audio. I got the, I'm recording. The oh, audio. okay, cool. This is like, <laughs> this, this is like going features. to the Bill Maher show and then be like, well, this, continue you know to what? watch more. Where's the... This, you know, cut this out. This should be for like our like Patreons, like just like you know, like a like a dealio. If you want, if you want to see the rest of our conversation afterwards. All right. Yeah. Well, then then you, I, then what Eric you really want to see. And then Eric has to hear me saying how I hit his wife. <laughs> <laughs> there I you go. Hit your. I didn't hit her. I I didn't even I didn't even blink an eye when she was complaining about the audio. I, maybe it wasn't her. I don't remember. <laughs> <sighs> okay well uh i'll start uh, i'll edit this i'll get it i'll get it done either tonight or tomorrow morning and you'll have it for you this will be done because then i got i'll do all the all the sketching for you too did you get my email by the way frank about did they want to see like four different characters I, I responded to that already okay i'll check it out i didn't check my email yeah it said give me 200 bucks worth of thumbnails okay will do yeah. all right cool all right I'll talk to you later. Okay. Right. Good talking to you. Take care. Thanks, Len. Thanks, man. Yeah. It's fun.